Coast. She's an actress that just actually finished her first full-length film, and she'll probably watch another one after the show. <laughs> You see, before I left the house, I did it loud. I did it hard. And it was really wet. I did it like four times in a row. What? I'm talking about sneezing. I have a cold. And do you like my red gloves? Look, they're very entertaining. I could be a turkey or I could be a cocktail. And this is the very first stage I ever did comedy on. And Louie Anderson introduced you. Coming to the stage, my very good friend, Lulu Graha. Well, I was mortified. My name's not Graha, it's Graha. So I yelled, hey, Louie. No bra, Louie, no bra. Graha, Lulu Graha, no bra. That's how you remember that. Well, everybody laughed. Everybody, except for Louie. But I tied the girls up tonight, because last night they were loose, and they were girls gone wild. <laughs> and my first name, Lulu, that's just a nickname. My real name is Lucille. You see, I got this nickname because I was a lot like a cartoon character, Little Lulu, when I was growing up. Little Lulu was always up to mischief, and Little Lulu was a handful for her family. Today, I'm still up to mischief, but I grew into more than a handful. And you know what I hate about this handful? When I squeeze my boobies together like this, it's like tree rings. You know my age by counting the trees. <laughs> and what if there are, you know, somebody told me there weren't a lot of Jewish people in jail. Is that because they eat lots? <laughs> and what if people buy those snuggies? Why don't they just put their bathrobe on backwards? They save 20 bucks. And I have these friends that just had a new baby. This is a true story. A new baby. And her name is Jen. She wanted to, they both wanted to name the baby after themselves. Her name is Jen. And his name is Eric. So when the baby was born, they just compromised. They named it generic. <laughs> and I was at the bank this morning, right? And this old comes up to me in the front of the bank. And he's like, ma'am, ma'am, could you help me? Could you help me check my balance? So I said, sure. So I pushed him. <laughs> his, his balance was way off. It was very, very low. I mean, yeah, that's not good. And you know what I hate? I really hate the social network anymore. I'm starting my own network. The anti-social network, and I'm calling it Asshole. <laughs> because I have these friends on Facebook, and, and it makes me nuts. Like, I have one friend, she lies and lies so much. She lies so much that her nose has grown really warm. It's so warm now that the flies have claimed the area around her nose are no fly zone. <laughs> then I have another friend, she's so ghetto. She's so damn ghetto. She's so ghetto that she thinks a speed bump is something you get after you shoot up. <laughs> then I have this other girlfriend. She, she thinks she's going to be a baby suit model. Well, that ain't going to happen. Because we went to the beach the other day, and she wore two beats. And she had so many moles and freckles. She had so many moles and freckles that when she fell asleep on a beach, the kids all came over and played connect the dogs. <laughs> then I have another friend, 
and every lady can relate to this. She tells everybody she's a size six. She's a size six. Well, she may be a size six on the top, but her ass takes up a whole time zone. <laughs> so we went to the beach one day and had lunch, and it was limited seating. So this young girl comes up to us and says, can I sit with you ladies? And we said, sure. Well, the girl was wearing a string thong bikini. String thong. So my girlfriend looks over at her and she goes, oh, I only wear my string thong bikini when I go to Brazil. What, she pulls the string and her ass becomes a flotation device? <laughs> That's crazy. And it's 45 years now since the concert at Woodstock and I was there. And I went back last summer, and here's the difference. Back then, when a guy my age walked by, I'd be like, wow, look at him. His hair is so long. This time, the same guy walked by, and I was like, wow, look at all the hair he lost. Back then, when us ladies sat around real coven and talked, who's your guy, who's your guy? We were talking about a pot. This time, when we sat around real coven, when we sat around in a little cover and talked, who's your guy, who's your guy? We were talking about our Botox doctor. <laughs> and back then, when a really cool couple would walk by, I'd be like, wow, look at him. He's so hip. And look at her. She's super hip. This time, the same couple walked by. And I was like, wow, look at him. He's got a new hip. And look at her. She's got two new hips and a knee. But, you know, things change, people change, times change. I know I've changed. Like now, when I have sex, I howl, I scream. I'm all over the place. My husband thinks it's his performance. It's my arthritis. <laughs> I suffer from CRS. Does anyone else have CRS? CRS? Can't remember shit? I can remember shit. I just choose not to listen. And I have to be honest with all of you. You're all my friends. And I haven't been feeling well lately. So I made up a word about how I feel. And I know a lot of you feel the same way. I'm exhausted. Exhausted. <laughs> Totally exhausted. Too tired to give a shit. <laughs> you know when you go in the kitchen and you don't know why you're there? Lately I've been going in the bathroom and I don't know why. <laughs> I don't know if I'm forgetful, if I'm demented, or just fermenting. I don't know. But I find that I'm tying my glasses around my neck now because if I lay them down, I can't find them. And I tie my cell phone to my belt because if I put it in the other room, I can't hear it. I even tie a bib on when I eat or I drool all over these boobies I grew into. And I find that now I tie everything I need on for the day and sometimes I just say fuck it and tie one on. <laughs> Damn bib, and I'm running all around town doing my errands with a bib hanging on me. I look like I just left the red lobster. So I said, That's it. I made a doctor's appointment. So I'm on my way to the doctor's, and you know, we've been having all that damn rain, right? So I get to the red light and I stop. And when I stopped at the red light, the rain stopped. So instead of turning off my wipers, I turned off the ignition. So now I get to the doctor's and I'm all stressed out. And the doctor's like, Lou, Lou, calm down. You need to do some water aerobics exercises to get older. Put on weight. Just go home. You have a pool at home. Go home, jump in your pool. So I did. I went home. I jumped in my pool. I sunk to the bottom. I saw a shit tied me. I was like an man. <laughs> I can't even drink that off 
because I stopped drinking. I feel if you drink spirits, someday you're going to see ghosts. <laughs> so here's how I quit. Maybe you could do the same thing. I peeled the labels off the bottle, I stuck them on my forehead, and I set them on the patch. That's how I did it. And I just had my 10th anniversary. I'm out of 10 years now. And people have been asking me, how's your relationship with your husband now that you're married 10 years? Well, I have to be honest, because you guys are my friend. It's on again, off again. You see, if I call him to the table and tell him there's dinner on the table, he's right on it. But if I tell him to help me clean out the garage, he takes off. And if we want to, if I tell him let's have sex, he takes his clothes right off and he's right on it. <laughs> but I think he feels a little locked in. Because the other day he's sitting on a couch and he's twisting his wedding ring back and forth, back and forth. I'm like, what are you doing that, Harry? Why are you twisting your ring back and forth? He looks at me and he goes, I'm looking for the combination. <laughs> that wasn't very nice. I don't know, you men, you I think you know what us ladies want, but you don't know what we really want. What we really, really want is to just eat all we can and not get fat. That's what we do. I have two grown sons. One's in the Marine Corps, Corporal Jesse Drayhoff. Right now. And he was deployed. Thank you. And he's deployed right now. Last time he was deployed, he went to the Orient. And I couldn't wait till he came home because I couldn't like to ask him if you buy a pair of shoes in China, does the taxi made around the corner? <laughs> he never answered me. He gave me that straight green look, you know? But this time everyone's like, where's Jesse? Where's Jesse? Well, I don't know where Jesse is. The Marines are funny like that. I don't know. I really, really don't know. But I do know this. Being a Marine, he's somewhere between Iraq and a hard place. <laughs> and it's... Thank you. And I wonder if it's his twin brother, Michael. I call him college boy. You see, he's been in college five years now, his fifth year. And I never hear from him. You know, this generation is all text message, email. We don't talk anymore. I just want to hear his voice. I just want to hear his voice. So here's what I did. I took out an envelope and I wrote him a letter. And in it I said, Michael, here's a hundred dollar bill. Spend it however you want. I don't care. Have a good time. But do me a big favor. Let me know you got the money in the letter. I never put a hundred dollars in the envelope. Help me call me. Amen.